So projectile motion is anything that moves through the air in two dimensions or in two directions. Okay? These are things that fly through the air both horizontally and vertically. So thus far we've looked at objects that either um, get shot straight up in the air and come straight back down or they move only horizontally uh, back and forth. Okay, those are the different types of motion we've looked at so far. Either things that move straight up in the air and come back down or that move from point A to point B horizontally. Now we're going to look at objects that do both. Okay, so can anyone give me an example of a projectile? Can we think of things that move through the air both vertically and horizontally? Yeah, it could be a plane. Okay, anytime we throw something, anytime um, you're jumping through the air, all these types of things are examples of projectile motion. Okay, so a, a lot of examples that we use here, if, if something is kicked or if something is thrown, um, we have a, a good example of projectile motion because it's moving through the air, it's reaching a peak height, but it's still going to be traveling horizontally. Yeah. Okay, the path of a projectile would look something like this. Okay, it's going to go through the air, it's going to reach a peak height somewhere, then it's going to have the exact same path on the way back down. Okay, the key to a perfect projectile is that these two sides should be completely symmetrical. It's going to take exactly the same time to go up as it does to come down. Okay, and there's some variance to this. If we would kick a, a, kick a football from maybe this height, and it lands below where it starts, then we don't have a perfect symmetrical projectile. We, do our, we solve it just a little differently. But we might have an object that um, maybe leaves from a horizontal platform, okay, and just simply falls to the ground. That's still considered a projectile motion, and that's what we're going to start with today, something called rolling projectiles, okay? When we're talking about projectile, we don't really care about the process that goes into releasing this object into the air. Okay, so we don't necessarily care about the kick. We don't care about the throw. We care about the object once it starts moving freely through the air. Okay, so we're only looking at the object once it becomes um, kind of by itself flying through the air type of a thing. Okay, we're not concerned with the force that goes into the kick or anything like that, the velocity of the kick. That doesn't really matter to us. Okay, we're just looking at the object once it starts flying through the air. Okay. I want to talk about this here just a little bit. It tells us that our acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. What is that value mean to us? Gravity. It's gravity. And what direction does gravity work in? Vertical or horizontal? Vertical. vertical. So I want you to make a, a little distinction here. This means that vertical acceleration is equal to negative 9.8. Okay? And that's a, a big distinction that we have to make. Okay? Because as these things go flying through the air, the vertical acceleration is always going to be negative 9.8. It's always going to be gravity. Okay, the horizontal acceleration is not gravity. Okay, so we have to make a distinction there uh, that that's our vertical acceleration. Okay? And with all these projectiles, we're going to break everything down into vertical and horizontal. We have separate equations that we use for vertical and horizontal. Okay, so we're looking at two completely separate things here. Okay? When we look at the path through the air, we can call it a projectile. We can call it trajectory. Have you heard that word before? Something's trajectory. That's given the path of it through the air. Okay, and we looked at what that would look like, um, kind of a parabola type path. Okay, that's called its trajectory. Okay, um, Galileo was the first person to really describe projectile motion, and he was the one that could point out that we have to analyze the vertical and the horizontal components of projectiles separately. Okay, that as something flies through the air, its vertical and its horizontal components act completely separate of each other. 
Okay, they don't uh, have anything to do with one another. How high something goes um, doesn't really play into how far it's going to travel horizontally. Okay, or vice versa. So we can look at our vertical and our horizontal components as total separates during this chapter. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, and I'll go ahead and try and zoom this in a little bit for you. Okay, so if you need a new equation sheet, there's some up here. Okay, you can come grab one if you want. Um, something that we want to make a distinction with here is we see how it says V sub Y F. Okay, what do you think that probably means? Final velocity, perfect. Final velocity in the y direction, okay? So go ahead and get these written down, and then we'll talk through the subscripts just a little bit more, okay? And this acceleration in the y direction, that's what we talked about, it's always going to be gravity. So you can include that if you want. You don't have to. Talking about projectiles, okay? We always assume that we don't have to take into consideration air resistance, okay? In high school physics, we, we live in a perfect physics world, and we're not going to have to worry about air resistance, okay? So we always just assume that this thing's going to fly completely free. Um, we're not going to have to worry about air resistance slowing it down, okay? We're always going to assume that our motion begins at time zero, okay? It always begins at t equals zero. Okay, that means that if we're given a specific amount of time, that's going to be the variable we plug in for t, okay? Or if we solve for time, that's going to be the amount of time that this motion took, okay? It doesn't mean that t is equal to zero for these projectile problems. It means that we start at t equals zero, okay? We start at a whole new portion of time. We're going to always assume that our motion begins at the origin, Okay, and this bullet point is a little bit tricky, um, and I'll explain it here in just a second. But we always want to assume that our motion begins at the origin. Okay, so that means whenever we're drawing our, our diagram of our problem, we always want to start at the origin, and we're going to draw our crosshairs so that we know where our origin is. Okay, what are the um, coordinates at the origin? Yeah, so at the origin, we always have zero, zero coordinates. And what those zero, zero coordinates tell us is that our initial x position is going to be zero, and our initial y distance or position is going to be zero. Okay? Since we're assuming our motion is always going to begin at the origin, that means x sub i, or our initial distance, in the horizontal direction and our initial distance or our initial position in the vertical direction is going to be zero. Okay? So what this is kind of telling us is that if our motion looks like this, okay, if our projectile somehow looks like that, that our x sub i would equal zero and our y sub i would equal zero because the initial position at our starting point is zero, zero. Okay, so these are our x equations for projectiles. You only need to have the shortened version, and I'll kind of explain why they are shortened as compared to our original kinematics equations. Read the entire problem. Don't assume you think you know what they're going to ask. Okay, you have to make sure you read the whole problem. Uh, it's really important that you choose the origin and the x-y coordinate system. So every time we draw a diagram about a projectile, we're always going to draw the diagram, include the origin, and then if for some reason your coordinate system is different, if you were going to choose down to be the positive direction and up to be the negative direction, you'd have to include that. Otherwise, we're pretty much always going to assume that up's positive, down is negative, to the right is positive, and to the left is negative. Okay, we should use our same coordinate system we always have. But if you're changing your coordinate system for some crazy reason, make sure that you include that. Okay, we're going to analyze x and y separately. 
and we're going to make our list. Uh, do we remember when we started kinematics, we always had a list of our variables in the margin, right? V sub i equals this, V sub x equals this. Do you remember that? Now we've got like twice as many variables because now we've got V sub y initial and V sub y final or V sub x initial blah 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 okay we've got a lot of variables so you've got to take good care to list those variables all separately determine what you have and what you don't have and that'll help you determine what equation you could use okay so you have to be very careful um, in determining those variables and making your list okay um, just a couple points here remember horizontal velocity doesn't change throughout the whole trajectory or out the, through the projectile V sub y final is equal to zero at the highest point of any trajectory. Okay, that returns downward. So let's think about this, and I want you to write this one down. If I'm going to launch something through the air, and I'm looking for vertical velocity at that point, at its highest point, okay, if I'm looking just at the first half of this motion from here to here, I would say V sub Y final is equal to zero, okay, because my initial, I'm sorry, my final vertical velocity at its highest point is zero. We have to remember that, okay. Our final vertical velocity at something's highest point is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so remember that we can solve these problems only looking at the first half of the motion, right? If I'm only looking at the first half, this would be my V sub Y F, and it would be equal to zero, okay? If vice versa, I was looking at the second half of the motion, my V sub Y initial would be zero, okay? Because for that little millisecond right at the top of its motion, uh, it's not moving vertically anymore. It's still moving horizontally, not moving vertically up or down. We're going to start with something called rolling projectiles. So these are objects that leave a flat plane and fall to the ground, like the ball that rolls off the table. Okay, so go ahead and get this one written down, and then we'll start working through it here um, as a class. Okay, so my diagram here, here's my cliff, here's where he starts. So my origin is always going to be at the start of our motion. So here's my origin. I'm going to go ahead and draw my crosshairs so I know exactly where my origin is. Okay, this is my starting point. Okay, I like to put it at the beginning of the motion. So it's really important for you to have this diagram and to have the crosshairs there so I know where your origin is. Okay? Now, let's talk about what the values we've been given tell us. This tells us that the cliff is 50 meters tall. Okay, so that means the height of my cliff is 50 meters. And it tells me I, he wants to land 90 meters from the base of the cliff. So that distance right there from the base to where he ends is 90 meters. Does that make sense so far on the diagram? We're feeling good about that. Okay, so now it's asking us to find how fast must the motorcycle leave the cliff, okay, if it's to land 90 meters from the base. So what are we solving for in that case? Velocity initial really okay but something that I want to point out here is that it tells us he leaves or he speeds horizontally off the cliff that means when he leaves the cliff he's leaving with purely horizontal velocity purely horizontal velocity and this is the key to a rolling projectile or what I call a rolling projectile he leaves with only horizontal velocity so that means we're solving for V sub X I 
okay? Because as he leaves the cliff, he's leaving purely horizontally, and then once he gets off the cliff, then gravity will start to pull him downward, okay? And he'll start moving or accelerating in the y direction. But as the instant he leaves the cliff, it's purely horizontal, okay? So if we know that he only has initial horizontal velocity, what does that tell us about initial vertical velocity that he has? It's zero. Very good. Very good. It's zero. Okay. If he's leaving with only horizontal velocity, that means the instant he leaves the cliff, he doesn't have any vertical velocity yet. Okay. As he starts falling, he will increase his vertical velocity in the downward direction because gravity will start doing that. But the instant that he leaves, V sub Y I is equal to zero. Okay. And that's a key on is what we call these rolling projectiles in which they leave horizontally and, and fall. Okay, and the difference what I'm talking about in a rolling projectile, which is this right here, and a launched projectile, which is something that goes up and comes back down, these are the differences. Okay, this is a rolling projectile. We start from a height, and we just kind of look at the second half of the motion. A launched projectile is when we go up and come back down. Okay, so we're starting with just these types right here. Okay. All right. Questions so far? starting point. So initially we've got a zero um, horizontal position and a zero vertical position. But we know we're going to land 90 meters away and 50 meters below where we started. Okay, so what does that tell me about y final and x final? Do we know? Perfect. Y final is negative 50 because we're going to end up landing 50 meters below where we started. Okay, here is our starting point, and here is our ending point. We're going to land 50 meters below where we started, and what about our x final? It's going to be positive 90 because we're going to end up to the right 90 meters of where we started. Okay. Are there any other variables that we automatically know? What do we always know about acceleration in the y direction? Good, it's gravity, negative 9.8. Okay, and since that's our only acceleration, you don't necessarily have to include the y, but you can. Okay, remember, we don't have any horizontal acceleration, so we don't have to include the x or the y, but you can if you want. Okay? So let's think about, do we have any equation that we can use to solve for V sub X I? Right here? Okay. But do we have X final? Yeah. Okay, we have that. We're solving for V sub X I. Do we have time yet? No. So we have to solve for time. Time is the only variable that can connect us between the vertical and the horizontal. Okay, that's the only thing that we can use in both places. So let's go ahead and solve for time. Okay, and I gave you the equation that we want to use here to solve for time. Okay, because we have our y final, which is negative 50. We have our y initial is 0. We know that v sub y i is equal to 0. So we're going to take this 1 half a t squared to solve for time. Okay, so y final is negative 50. 0 plus 0 plus 1 half negative 9.8 times t squared. Should time ever come out negative? No. 
It should never come out negative. So you have to make sure that you're plugging in negative 50 here because we're starting or we're ending at 50 meters below where it started. Okay, so I got T to equal 3.19 seconds. Do we agree? We're dividing over this negative 4.9, then we take the square root of that answer. So from the time the person leaves the cliff right here to the time it lands on the ground, it's going to take him 3.19 seconds. Okay? And we know that if we dropped him from that same height, it would take 3.19 seconds. Because we just proved that whether we drop them or whether they launch as a projectile, uh, vertically it's going to take the same amount of time. Okay, the vertical and horizontal are separate. So now let's go ahead and solve for V sub xi, or our initial velocity, the speed at which they left the cliff. Okay, our x final is equal to 90. We're solving for V sub xi, and we know our time is 3.19. All right, so this one asks us a few different questions. There's lots of information that we can gather from this particular problem, okay? So go ahead and get everything written down and get your diagram drawn. If you can start picking out some variables, go ahead and do that. Okay, if you can start picking out uh, what these numbers are telling us, you can go ahead and do that. Otherwise, we're going to start it as a class. Okay, right off the bat from our origin right here, we know that initial horizontal position is zero, and we know that initial vertical position is zero, okay? Again, the reason we know this is because we choose our origin to be where the motion starts from. We could choose our origin to be on the ground, but to keep everything consistent, I like to choose the origin wherever the motion starts from, okay? So from that information, what do we know about this 24 meters? What variable does that tell us? Good. It tells us y final is equal to what? Negative 24. Perfect. Okay. And that's because we're going to end up 24 meters below where we started. Very good. Okay. We've got that done. What does this horizontal velocity tell us? What variable? Good. V sub x i equals 3.21. Okay. It's initially when it leaves the cliff or leaves this, yeah, cliff, um, initially is traveling horizontally at a speed of 3.21 meters per second. Okay. That coincidentally is also its horizontal final velocity. But we don't really care about that. Okay. The other thing that this tells us is that its initial vertical velocity is what? Zero. Zero. Good. If it leaves the cliff with purely horizontal velocity, that means that V sub Y I must be zero. Okay, that's a very important key to these rolling projectiles is it says it's thrown horizontally or it's launched horizontally or it's driven horizontally off of something. That means we have a V sub XI, but no V sub YI. Okay? Any other questions? Okay, so we want to solve for time, first of all. We want to find out what time is. What equation can we use to solve for time?
Are we going to use a vertical equation or a horizontal equation to solve for time? Hmm? A horizontal? Okay, so what horizontal equation would we use? Do we have XF? No. So that won't work. Okay? Now let's look at our vertical equations. What of our vertical equations could we use to solve for time? Yeah. Y sub F equals Y sub I plus V Y I T plus one half A T squared. Okay? On these rolling projectiles, these two terms will almost always be zero. Okay? On these projectiles that are launched horizontally, that means V sub Y I is going to be zero. And as long as we choose our origin at the start of the motion, Y I is going to be zero. Okay? So it makes our equation a little simpler. Do we agree with that 2.21? Okay, good. I'm seeing some head nods. All right. How far from the base does the rock land? What variable does that mean we're solving for here? Good, good. X final. Okay, so that means for this one we want to solve for X sub F. Now we can go back and use this equation here because we have v sub x i and we have t. Okay, so we can solve for x final equals v sub x i times time. Okay, do we agree there? Yeah, no? Okay. And our last section, what we're looking for here, tell me what variable we should be solving for. Final vertical velocity of the rock. Velocity. V sub what? Good. F, Y, or Y, F. Either way. doesn't matter what order you put these two subscripts in. But we're looking for final vertical velocity. Um, yeah, final vertical velocity. Okay. So take a look over your equation sheet. Which of those vertical equations could we use to solve for that? Which one? Yeah, the first one would work. V sub y f equals v sub y i plus a t. Right, our simple one. You could use the third one if you want. Mm -hmm. So we're solving for V sub Y F. What do we know about V sub Y I? Zero. Good. Negative 9.8 times time, which I erased, I think was 2.21. Okay. What's it tell us here that our velocity is negative? What's that mean to us? Good. It's going in the downward direction, and that's good, right? We want this vertical velocity to be going in the downward direction, so it should come out negative. Okay? Any questions on this one? 